Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Video 65. In this particular video, we're actually going to set up our containers in our different states, add some rotation, and start parsing XML. Isn't that pretty cool? And so let's go ahead and go to the application and start doing that. So I'm in the application I've been building, and I'm in the home state right here. And what I want to do is bring out a rich text box here so I can add the introductory text. So just go down here in your Components panel. Now, if the Components panel does not appear, just go to Windows and click on Components, and it'll come out. And then once you click on Components, you can actually dock that tab. That's a docking tab that you can move around. See, I'm moving it around here. Let's dock it back here and uh, put it where you need to. So with that done, what I want to do is just drag out a rich text area. So scroll down here and grab a text area and drag it to the stage. And I'll stretch it out a little bit. When I did that, you see in the Properties panel, which you talked about last time, you can actually see we've actually got the properties of that coming up. That is an S or a Spark text area container. And I'm just going to give it the name My Text. There you go. And so I've just got my first text box in, and that's in the home state. So now let's go to the next state so we can add our other containers. And so I go up here to the state uh, uh, section, and I just click on the little drop down. I go to the next state. Now, I called it Class 1, but you can call it anything. Probably Class 1 is not the best name in the world, but it's a name. So click on that, and you're in the next state. So nothing's there. So let's drag in the containers. And if you call, I need a list box. I need a panel with a list box and a text box in it. So first of all, we're going to have a little text area title. That's the title of our lesson. And then I need a little uh, list box. We're going to actually bring all my videos, and I can click on those. So just drag out a list box. There you go. And then I want a panel, so let's drag a panel. If you scroll down your Components tab, you see there's a Layout tab. And those layouts are basically your containers. And there's my little panel right here. Drag that out. And let's just move that around a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to stretch that panel out a little bit. And in that panel, I want a list box for the downloads, and I want a text area for the assignments. So let's go ahead and put a list box in there for downloads. So scroll back up in your Components panel. Put a list box. There you go. And let's put a text area right next to it. Stretch it out a little bit. Let's bring our text area out. And there we go. And we'll just shrink that a little bit. Now I have a problem. I can't actually see these panels because everything is white. So let's change the background color of the panel. So you just click on this and go to your properties. And in your properties, just scroll down. You can actually see the color. That's the background color right there. So click on that. And we'll change that background color to kind of a brown. Let's see how that looks. A little dark for what we're doing, but it'll be okay for now. Now I actually want to give this a title. So if I double click in the panel, that gives me a little uh, space to type the title in. I'm just going to call this Downloads and Assignments. There you go. And that's all done. And at this point, what I actually need to start doing is giving these different components names so I can actually program them. So let's go back to the home state and program the home state first. And I called that uh, my text. I gave it an ID already. And with that ID, I can actually start programming it. So with that clicked or highlighted, let's go to the source view. And we can actually see we've actually highlighted the source view. Now, where does all that parsing occur? Well, that occurs uh, in the flow of the program. So when the program is created, you go to creation complete. That fires the initiation method, and below that is the method where all the text is actually parsed. And we actually want to parse this assignment text right here. So let's uncomment these two lines and explain them. I've actually created a kind of a long cumbersome string that's called HTML text as HTML2. And uh, no real rhyme or method to that particular name, but if I roll over and click on that, all it really is is a string. So I could have called it anything, and I just gave it this long name. And so you could have called it anything that you want. I just called it that. So let's scroll back down to it. And so what I'm actually doing in this particular line of code is I'm doing the get data results, which grabs all the information from the uh, XML. So if you missed that, go back to one of our previous videos where I explain all this. The last results is all the XML data, and the dot assign zero will be basically all the information for the first page. So let's take a look at the XML and see what's in dot assign zero. So if I open up my PHP course and I go to Assets and I go to Data, double click on the Data Master and I'm going to go look at the very first assign link. And in that very first assign link, I've got Welcome to PHP Lesson 5 by Lively. And in all that, they basically start using HTML tags. You can see I'm using the span tag here, the break tag here. And how do I get away with using all that HTML? Well, first of all, you must use the CData tag right here. 
So uh, if I just try to put an HTML tag inside of XML, it gets confused because XML uses the greater than or less than sign as its functional. So to get around that, you actually have to use a C data tag. So basically, that's a less than sign or apostrophe, a bracket, C data bracket. Now to close that, what do you need? At the very end, I'm going to go bracket bracket less than sign and that closes everything so in order to actually have HTML text inside of XML you've got to use the cdata tag convention now if you forget the cdata tag convention just remember what's happening in your action script so let's go back to the program and if you look at the program itself that we've written there is the FX script and in the FX script tag all the code is actually enclosed in a cdata tag that tells Flash Builder, hey, this is not regular MXML or Spark uh, coding. And so if you look at that, if you forget what that CDA tag is, it's just, the first, it's just the first tag in your FX script. And if you forget what the ending tag might be, just scroll all the way down to your uh, ending uh, FX script, and that's the last tag for your CData. So it's used for XML, but it's also used in action scripting to tell the program, hey, this is something different. So that's your introduction to C data tags, and within that C data tag, I can put all my HTML programming. So that's a sign one, and that's what's actually going to be put into my text box. So let's go back to the code real quick and see what I need to do. And it's not necessarily trivial. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the zeroth result. That's all that HTML for the first uh, page, and use a get data and turn it into a string and throw it into HTML text tag and then once I have that I'm actually going to do one more thing I'm going to import that from string use the text flow utility and uh, stick that into my text using the dot text flow method now that's fairly complicated so basically I would not have come up with this on my own so I had to go to the Adobe Docs and now whenever I do this I just grab this code so you grab this code too and use it as well and uh, as you get more programming tools under your belt, this will make a lot more sense to you. But basically covering one more time, we've got to grab the assignment zero, bring that in as a text string, then use the text flow utility in a sense to port that from string, stick that into my text using the dot text flow. And that dot text flow is what's going to give me that HTML formatting. Now gone all the days when you just do a simple HTML tag. So in the old days, if you remember uh, Flash Builder, you could just go dot HTML. And that has been replaced with all this stuff. But you know what? Adobe's done a lot of work on this, and we now have a world-class text system which processes multiple languages. So there's no free lunch. You give up something like this to get something like that, and you know what? I'm happy with something like that, especially if I need to speak in Chinese, Spanish, or whatever contract I'm running through Google Translator on the web. So let's go ahead and run the program and see if it gives us our uh, text in our text box. And let's run the code. Now when I try to run this program, I actually get an error, and so let's roll over and see what the problem is. When I roll over, I see I have access to this text flow utility. I actually have to import this text flow utility. So let's go ahead and paste that code in. I have it in my clipboard here. So we'll go control V. And that's the Spark Utility Text Flow. So once again, kind of some weird names here with this new kind of world-class text engine that Adobe has created but yet the functionality is fantastic. So I'm willing to go through a little bit more work and a little bit more pain than just a simple .html to do some fantastic stuff. So let's go ahead and hit save. And that goes away. Let's run our program. And our program starts up. In our list box, we actually see an introduction to uh, what's actually in the course. And what I need to do is actually kind of stretch this out a little bit so it looks better and add a rotation to it. So let's go back to design. Let's just spread this out a little bit and make it a little higher. And let's put a little bit of a rotation on it, so I'll have this highlighted, go to source. And I'm just going to kind of click inside the text area box, just hit a space, and just put a rotation on it. And it'll be a rotation in Y. And let's do 20 degrees and see how that looks. So hit save and run it again. Hey, that was the wrong way, so let's go the other way. Let's put a minus 20 degrees on that. Let's rotate the other way. And there you have it. I've actually parsed a little bit of HTML, uh, brought that into my... Uh, program. I got some bolding here. It's a little bit small, so I need to increase the text size or bring it closer to me. But things are starting to work. If I click on one, I don't transition to class one. So in the next video, I actually have to create some transitioning code and actually parse those text boxes as well. So what did we do in this particular video? Well, we actually added containers to our particular so in the home state, we added a uh, text area component. And in the class one or the button state, we actually added uh, a simple text, uh, a list box, a uh, panel, a list box, and a uh, text area. And in the next video, we're actually going to finish coding up these particular boxes.
So uh, we are getting close to finishing this initial application so we can actually put it up on Facebook. Uh, thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. This was Mike Lively.